Ms. Roach, and good morning to Prime Minister Jacobs, my colleague ministers, members of the media, Ms. Roach, uh, viewing and listening public. Just a quick update, I'm sure everyone has heard uh, last Saturday we had our launch of the larger home porting ship here with Celebrity Cruise Lines. We had a successful launch of the inaugural home porting operation of Celebrity Cruise Lines cruise vessel Millennium on Saturday. St. Martin set sail again last Saturday and we are looking forward to the cruise industry recovering in the weeks and months to come. And this translating into more weekly and daily ships visiting the island. Our destination is on a journey of recovery and higher economic growth. We also have two smaller ships that, have, that will also be home porting here. Starting June 19th, we have Windstar, and in August, we have Crystal Cruises. I'm grateful to the management team at Royal Caribbean Celebrity for their commitment to St. Martin. We did our utmost to make St. Martin a reliable partner in not only creating home porting on a historic scale, but also in helping to relaunch cruise the cruise industry in the Caribbean, for which St. Martin garnered significant exposure globally. With this incredible project, they reaffirmed their confidence in our island as a destination and a cruise attraction. And with this, I would also like to extend my congratulations to the Port of St. Martin, as well as the airport, the Princess Juliana International Airport. Feedback received from Saturday's uh, arrivals and Saturday's handlings of the passengers in and out the airport and the, term the port terminal were positive. The port was prepared with their team. Their team deserves all of the praise in the world for making it a smooth onboarding for the passengers starting their first cruise since 15 months. Also, the experience, even though our airport is at about 30% capacity or occupancy of what we're utilizing, it is important to note that a lot of the feedback that came from the journalist that was visiting, some of the passengers that was visiting, was also positive because the airport and immigration did a significant, with the health team as well actually, did a significant job of ensuring that passengers, that over 2,100 passengers passed through that airport with as little a hiccup as possible. So I would really like to give my gratitude for that. With that said, airlift numbers continue to increase with American Airlines' inaugural flight from Dallas, which also took place on Saturday. American Airlines made its inaugural flight from Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport to St. Martin with a new air service and their first, and some of the first the cruise passengers for the home porting were eagerly welcomed at St. Martin Airport. The, the St. Martin Airport team stood equipped to receive a total of 19 flights with 2,147 inbound and 1,668 outbound. The nonstop flight from Dallas will run on Saturdays from June 5th until August 14th. Passengers were also welcomed by cultural dancers and enchanting steel pan entertainment courtesy of the airport's management and the St. Martin Tourist Bureau. All of this which was said to have contributed to a better passenger experience at the airport. Together with our newly launched home porting venture, these flights add a huge boost to our airlift numbers and restores confidence in our island despite the ongoing pandemic. St. Martin can expect to see increased stay over arrivals and economic activity, and we look forward to welcoming our visitors in a safe and secure way. In terms of hurricane preparedness, we are still in hurricane season. In fact, we just started it. I would like to notify businesses and the community at large that as we approach, that as we are in hurricane season, we urge you to take steps to protect your homes and business, including insur ensuring that you have the right insurance to secure your property. Our ability to bounce back after a natural disaster is essential to our economic success. Happening next week, uh, which is also a sign that St. Martin is being chosen as a destination for conferences to be held, is the Carib Avia Conference. On June 15 to the 17th, the fifth annual Caribbean Aviation Meetup, Carib Avia for short, will be held on St. Martin at the Simpson Bay Resort. It will be the third time that the conference is being held on St. Martin, and we are excited about the confidence that this has placed in our island by the organizers. The conference is for all airlift stakeholders, the objective of Caribavia is to bring them together for discussions and increase collaboration in areas such as inter-island transportation, 
issues and opportunities. Uh, as the last announcement, actually tomorrow evening, Thursday, the Culture Department and the Tourism Bureau have come together to support one of our local artists, something that we are really trying to promote in, in our tourism, combining culture, combining the orange economy with our tourism product. And that is a celebration of Miss Bianca Dykoffs, who will be featured in the movie In the Heights. I am sure it will be available for the rest of the public to see, but this is one of those ways that we continue to celebrate our local artists. And I hope that once they, it opens up that the public will have the opportunity to celebrate another one of our local artists. Thank you for your attention and I'm available for any questions. Uh, thank you, Ms. Roach and uh, good morning to everyone in the room, to the viewing and listening audience. I have a question for the Minister of TF and the Minister of Finance. Uh, first question, uh, while home porting is a new and historic opportunity for St. Martin, it is still susceptible to threats of climate change and global shocks. And I remember during the lockdown, we had lots of uh, public discourse on diversifying our economy. And I'm also aware that um, the ministry had a work group or committee, I believe, um, that was formed to brainstorm ways in which we can diversify our economy. And so my question for the minister is, uh, what plans has the ministry started to add other industries that our economy could, rely, could rely on? And my question for the minister of finance is, can you share details on the status of the budget and when can we expect it to be, be debated on in parliament? Thank you for the question. Um, and thank you for the reminder, because even though diversification was something that we had to consider, it was not something that I was prepared to go into during a pandemic because it requires significant financing. And my message has always been from the very beginning that while I support diversification, the one driver that kept our economy going was what we know, which is tourism. So unless we fix our tourism product, we, there is no way that we can survive in order to diversify. But what the ministry has done is actually worked in conjunction with the Ministry of Finance and with credits to provide loans to, with actually also NRPB uh, and the trust fund to provide financing for projects that actually will be supporting small entrepreneurs. One of those things that you see that's happening here is a lot of people are doing their, uh, their own farming and it's about providing support to those sort of businesses. Uh, and for instance, I was actually updating uh, Council of Ministers yesterday as well, that with our contacts, with our position as ministers, we take advantage in ways that we can actually support and promote our, our industries here that we have. And one of the things that I have done is put one of our designers in contact with the crews so that they can sell their products on the crews. That is how we level up our country. That's how we make sure that our people can survive. So while diversification is very much a discussion, it was something that we could not jump on when we were trying to figure out that uh, how we open back up our country. How do we rebuild our, our, our island in terms structurally as well as uh, the airport? So diversification will continue to be an option so that you can we can rely on something in the worst case scenario that we have a stoppage again due to a pandemic. Thank you and I hope I've answered your question. Any hiring of any uh, management or a board goes through a process. Once that process is completed, it goes for advice around uh, the various agencies that we have here to vet corporate governance and once that's done, that's when we get notification and whoever management or board is will be placed on there. So I do not have a timeline for that, but it, did, it is in the process. Thank you very much.